Shalom Aleichem, my name is Rabbi Yeshua Marchuk. I'm the Director of Alumni Connections at the OU. That includes NCSY alumni, includes Heart to Heart, Israel Free Spirit, as well as JLIC. I wanted to share with you some thoughts on this week's parasha, Parsha Shoftim. The Pasuk reads, Vel HaShofet Asher Yiyah Bayamim HaHem. And to the judge who will be in those days, that's who you need to go ahead and respect, says the Pasuk. Rashi explains on the spot, that even if your judge of your generation is not up to the same levels, not up to the same qualities, not up to the same Torah heights as Choftim, as judges, as Torah leaders from previous generations, you still must follow the word and the example of your generation's Jewish leader. This reminds me of the famous Mishnah that's brought down at the end of the second parak of Maseches Rosh Hashanah. There was a machloket between Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Yeshua over when to go ahead and declare the new month, the month of Tishrei, which obviously is the beginning of Rosh Hashanah. The Fed of Edom came, Jewish witnesses, on the 29th of El, which was a little premature usually, and they claimed that they saw that there was a new moon. However, it was decided by Rabbi Ndosa ben Harkonnes that they, they were not good witnesses, that they were false witnesses. And Rabbi Yeshua sided with Rabbi, De, Rabbi Dosa. Then when Rabbi Galil, who was the undisputed leader of the Jewish world at this time, heard that Rabbi Yeshua had not sided with him, and felt that no, that it wasn't the proper day, and actually it was the following day on the 30th of El to declare the new month and Rosh Hashanah, he ordered Rabbi Yeshua to come visit him on Yom Kippur, according to Rabbi Yeshua's calculations, on the day that it would have been Yom Kippur, according to Rabbi Yeshua, holding a staff in his hand and a bag of money in his hand. Obviously, both of these are prohibitions on Yom Kippurim, and this would be a violation of Yom Kippur if it was actually Yom Kippur itself. So by doing this, by Ramil ordering to do this, it would be a violation of when of the laws of Yom Kippur itself. This reminds me of a famous story about a tailor who lived in Vilna. The tailor, on Friday afternoon, had a chicken brought to the Shochet to shecht, to ritually slaughter, to be prepared for Friday night suda, the Friday night meal. When the chicken came back, it seemed to have been an issue, and possibly a shayla, a question whether or not it was actually shechted properly, and if it was kosher itself. So. Taylor turned to his son and he said, please bring this to the famous Rosh Hashiva, the famous scholar, the Gaon, the Vilna Gaon, to go ahead and determine whether or not the chicken was actually treif or kosher. Well, young man brought the chicken to the Vilna Gaon and he showed it to him and the Vilna Gaon, on the spot, Paskin determined, declared that no, it was unfit to be used. He brought the chicken back home and subsequently, without knowing that the husband had sent one son to go ahead and check with the Vilna Gon about the quality of the chicken, the status of the chicken, the, the wife of the, the household turned to another son of theirs and asked him to bring the chicken to the rub of the community, the, the, the chief rabbi of Vilna. Well, this other son brought the chicken to the chief rabbi of Vilna, and when the chief rabbi saw the chicken, determined that in fact it was kosher. When the rub heard that his decision on the status of the chicken was in direct conflict with the Vilna Gon status of the chicken, the rub of the community, the chief rabbi, went to see the Vilna Gon. And when he went to the Vilna Gon, he turned to him and said, there is no question in my mind that you are ten times the Torah scholar that I ever will be. However, in my position as the chief rabbi, of the city of Vilna, I am who the, the buck stops with me, and that halachic determination comes through me. And if people will hear that you went ahead and paskined differently than me, and people will now not go ahead and eat the chicken, it'll undermine my authority and it will destroy exactly what this Pasak that we just mentioned, that it will destroy my status as the halachic decision maker in our community. I'm asking you, the Rav said to the Vilna Gaon, to please accompany me tonight to the house of the tailor and eat from the chicken.
on the spot, the Vilna Gaon turned and said, absolutely. And after they left the Beit Knesset, after they left synagogue that Friday night, they both together went to the house of the tailor. And once at the house, they sat down at the table, and they were all prepared to eat from this new chicken that was just brought before both of them earlier in the day. Before they could participate in eating into the chicken, something miraculous happened. The wick of the Shabbos lights, the wick of the Shabbos candles, broke off and spilled the oil of the Shabbos candles all over the chicken that was sitting and smelling delicious in front of the whole family and ended up ruining the entire chicken that it was unedible. At that point in time, the damage was done both for the positive and the negative. Yes, the chicken was not edible and no one could eat from it. However, the Vilna Gon had, by accompanying and prepared to eat from the chicken, had made a major statement to uphold the status of the rub of the community, to uphold the Pasuk that we have just been discussing, and understood that, yes, there is a leadership in the Jewish people, and in our town, it was the rub of the city that determines halacha, and not me, myself. Shabbat Shalom.